Hi, I'm Bobby Lyons, and I'm located outside Portland, Oregon. I have over 18 years of experience coaching competitors through canine fitness exercises to improve the performance of their dog. Today, I want to talk to you about functional rear end awareness. My definition of functional rear end awareness is when the dog is actively shifting weight to the rear to access strength in the low back abdominal muscles and rear limbs. Once you have achieved functional rear end awareness, the goal is to activate the lower abdominal muscles, activate the hip stabilizers, teach your dog to break and collect with their whole body, access speed and power from the rear, and decrease the chance of injury. Some commonly used tricks um, to teach rear end awareness are four feet in a bowl, spider up the wall, back up onto raised objects, and individual rear leg lifts. You can see in these photos that all three of, or all four of these exercises shift weight to the front. So the repetition involved in training these often teaches the dog how to bear more weight forward, not how to bear weight back. So these exercises are okay. Um, there's nothing wrong with them, but they might not be achieving functional rear end awareness where the dog is able to access power from the rear. In my opinion, and through my experience, what these exercises do is they teach the dog to rely even more on their front than they already were. And then that translates to taking off for jumps with the front, trying to collect with the front until, instead of their whole body, stopping on contacts with the front, and it generally creates issues with knocked bars and improves the chance of injury. So what we want to do is try to um, continue. We can train these things, but we also want to train the dog how to shift weight to their rear and access that power. So I'm going to talk a little bit later in this presentation about the very first exercise I would teach to help your dog understand how to access that power. So some other things that affect rear end awareness are the age and activity level of your dog. So just be very, very careful that as your dog ages, that you are keeping them active, continuing to do their exercises and keeping their nose above spine height so that they are shifting weight to the rear. Um, muscle loss in the rear does not have to be an age related issue. So um, keep those dogs active. Any rear end injury. So even a toe or a nail or a psoas injury or a um, a knee injury all contribute to forward weight shift. So the dog thinks that that's going to hurt when they shift their weight back, then they shift their weight forward. And many, many dogs have to be convinced to continually shift their weight back after an injury because they don't want it to hurt. Your position and your reward position are very, very, very important to where your dog's weight is shifted. And we're going to go over that on the next slide. Um, if you are sitting on the floor, Generally speaking, the dog's focus is down instead of up. Um, and so if you are wanting to do an exercise that is focused on rear end strength and the dog's nose is below spine height, then um, you're not really accomplishing that goal. And so I think the next slide will help you understand that a little bit better. Um, also, just tricks in general that are repetitively sh shifting weight forward um, will contribute to a forward weight shift. So. Um, like spider up the wall, handstands, um, nose to a target plate are all um, some uh, examples there. The other thing that I see a lot are dogs that manage slippery floors all the time. Slippery floors cause a forward weight shift in the dog because that's where their stability point is. So dogs that don't sit right, dogs that don't take off or jumps right, um, they often live on slippery floors. So if we can teach the dog how to shift their weight back um, on floors that aren't slippery and then transfer that to a slippery surface over time, then that will help them um, in their performance world. So just things to think about. I'm not telling you to go out and carpet your entire house, um, but definitely there is a systematic way to help the dog manage their weight shifting better when they're on a slippery surface. All right, um, so when we look at reward position, head position. 
So in general, the head position dictates the weight shift. So you can see in these photos of both dogs that as the dog's head goes forward and down, you can see more weight is shifted. Um, in the middle picture on the top with Bravo, you can see that he actually stepped wider. Um, he's still wide in the next picture where he is um, looking down. And um, that is really, really, um, these are really good visual for you to understand that the dog cannot have weight shifted to their rear feet unless their nose is above spine height. So keep that in mind when you're training, especially if you're trying to train for rear end exercises. I continually have people say, my dog needs more, more muscle mass in the rear, but they're spending all their time backing up to objects or backing up things or, or, um, uh, doing things that are actually shifting weight forward instead of to the rear. So really pay attention to where your dog's weight is shifted. If that's the area you're trying to strengthen, the weight should be shifted there. So hopefully that makes sense. So why do we care in general? Um, for a performance dog, repetitively stopping and collecting at speed using primarily the front assembly increases the chance of neck, upper back, and shoulder injury. So what we want to do is teach that dog to collect and stop and turn and jump with their rear assembly and not so much with their front. We want to teach our dogs to access power from the rear when collecting to take off for jumps. We want to teach our dog to collect and stop with their whole body instead of just their front limbs. We want to teach the dog to better understand foot placement for running and stopped contact training. We want to teach the dog to drive through the weave poles with all four feet. And we also want to teach um, a better understanding of hind limb awareness for precision tricks. And going back to the dog walk, um, you really want to have really, really good, strong limb awareness before the dog is going over the dog walk so that if they are not sure footed, that they can find their balance. So balance and strength really go hand in hand with teaching the dog to weight shift to the rear as shown in this picture, um, teaching the dog to shift weight with all four limbs. If you remember the picture in the very beginning of the presentation um, where I showed that shifting back, and actually I'll just go back to it really quick. So this is not as compressed as this picture, but you can see the similarity um, in how the dog is shifting weight. Um, this dog is a little bit lower, but he's actually on a, um, incline as well. So, or a decline rather. So how do we get there? So for me, that means teaching rear foot targeting as a forward motion. So the first things that we are going to mark or click for is the second front foot leaving the mat. As the dog comes over the mat, that second front foot is in the air. That's what you're going to click for. So almost like you're looking through, um, through binoculars at your dog's feet, you're just waiting for that second front foot to leave so that you can click. And then you're going to toss a treat back here on the floor to start that weight shifting process. Initially, your dog is just going to turn and go get the treat and come back, but eventually you're going to get a weight shift that looks more like this. So once you have a clean loop of behavior, so that is, you know, eight to nine correct positions, um, in a row, out of 10, you're gonna then add a cue. I think one of the things that happens more often is people start proofing and adding movement before they put the behavior on cue. And it's so, 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 so important for the dog to understand what's gonna happen next. So put the behavior on cue once you have a clean loop at this stage. And then you're gonna start changing your movement and possibly what you're rewarding with. So in this third video, I have um, actually run by the mat and told drama to feet which is his rear foot target cue he stops on the mat he shifts his way back i would generally take the toy that is in my hand and toss it to him and then turn around and tug with him in position that is one way to um, proof that exercise in the next part of the presentation i'm going to show you a portion of three videos that shows you how to train it and put it on cue how to add your movement or change your position and add your movement and, and the whole weight shift um, concept. So this is really what we wanna do is make sure that we are attaching the cue, my cue is feet, 
to the rear foot target um, with that rear weight shift. So for instance, when I ask Drama to put his rear feet on something, um, whether that thing is behind them, behind him, or whether um, he's coming onto it from a forward motion, he knows when I say feet, it doesn't just mean put their, his feet on it. It means put his feet on it and shift his weight back. So by training rear foot targeting as a forward motion, that's what we're training. We're training the rear feet on the thing and shift your weight into your rear feet. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So I'm gonna stop this part of the program and I'm going to grab the three videos and go through those with you. And then I'll come back to the PowerPoint. Okay, I'm gonna play this video a little bit, but what you want to look for is that I am clicking for the second front foot leaving the mat. So the goal is for the treats to be out here, for the puppy to come back across the mat, and as that second front foot leaves the mat, you're gonna click, because that is the moment that front feet are on the blue mats and rear feet are on um, the little crate mat that I have here. You don't want the dog to come into this space between my knees and the mat because um, that's not setting him up for success. So if he does that, you will likely see me um, move a little bit forward to set him up for success because my goal is a clean loop of behavior. I toss a treat, dog comes back into position, I click at the exact right position and then toss that treat and start again. So I'm gonna let this play for a little bit and then I will um, come back and narrate a little bit more. Okay, so if he offers me something that I don't want, like sitting on the mat or laying down or coming into that space, I'm just gonna ask for a nose touch, uh, sorry, a nose touch and toss a cookie and start again. Good, all right. That was 10, so now we're gonna play. All right, and then I'm gonna skip to the next session here and start it again. Stop being on his own. Back just a little bit to make sure that he's stopping. Good. Now I'm going to test it. I'm going to throw oh. it. Oh, I threw it too far to the side. Let's see if he figures it out. Good boy. Good. So you can kind of see here that he is starting to figure out that his rear feet are supposed to be on the mat. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to the next session here. Every time, not being lured by my hand, but stopping with just his rear feet on the mat. Touch. So he Good. offered me a down. So I asked him to touch there because he was actually offering me his mat behavior, which is a lay down. So what that tells me is that he's starting to get tired of this game. This was our third session of 10 treats. So it might have been better to do um, three sessions of five treats instead. So okay, so um, generally speaking with a young dog, you wanna keep your sessions really, really short. I'm gonna um, skip again here to another day that we did so that you can kind of see how it progressed. And then here is another session with adding the cue. Adding the cue a little late there, it should be before. He laid down there, but that's, I'm not gonna worry about it. You always wanna reduce criteria um, when you add another element. 
So first he's stopping there because of my position. Good, but you can see that weight shift to the rear there. So here when he stepped back, I'm not going to worry too much about that because again, we want to reduce the criteria when we add a new element of an exercise. So I'm going to instead adjust my position most likely so that he doesn't have to step back and then we'll progress from there. All right, I think you get the idea on this. Um, you want to set your dog up for success. So when he went over it a couple of times and didn't stop, I just made it a little easier by not making my position so far from the mat. So listen to your dog and um, go through the steps to get that good loop of behavior. All right, I'm going to go to the third video. Okay, so this is just me proofing his feet cue to make sure that he is finding that target even when he's turning. Um, this is a good way to just um, kind of make it a game for your dog. Good. And then bring, bring the toy into him, let him tug in position, and then add your movement. All right, so these are kind of all of the steps that you're going to want to take to get that rear foot target trained. So again, you can see this position is very, um, it's lowered, it's shifting weight to the rear um, so that he can access that power. So that's what um, the start of functional rear end awareness really is, um, at least for me, this is how I train it, is training that rear foot target with the associated weight shift to the rear um, and then using it for other things. 
So I'm going to go back to um, the very last part of the presentation. Okay, hopefully this presentation has given you some insight on how to teach better functional rear end awareness where your dog is accessing um, the ability to break with their whole body, the ability to power from the rear by using um, initially just rear foot targeting and a weight shift to the rear associated with that rear foot targeting cue. So um, because I didn't show the videos in their full length, I have attached the video links here to the presentation and I'm sure that um, that they will put it in the comment section. So I hope that these videos help you understand how to achieve a rear foot target with weight shift to the rear. And then if you have questions about how that transfers to functional rear end awareness, please ask me in the comments. I'm happy to help you um, with those answers.